Okay, chapter 16 of Theological Political Treaties by Baruch Spinoza. And this, in this chapter, he, he, he talks about the foundation of the state, the commonwealth. And to be honest, um, it, it is in this book, but I read uh, uh, um, another book that he, he describes this book. I'm forgetting the title of the book, and that's where I got to know about this book. I, I came across the other book by basically by like an accident, and then I read it. And it was basically talking about the history of this book and how it was written, the chaos that surround, surrounded that, and then the, the content of it. And I, the, the, the writer of that book was describing this, um, this chapter of this book, and I found it to be so interesting. Uh, let me find the title of that book. I think it's titled A Book Forged in Hell by Stephen Nadler. So that's where I, 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 that's the book I read and then I came across, uh, I, then I came to know of this book. I think I found that book basically by accident. It seems interesting and I decided to buy it. I read it and I wanted to know which, what book, which book are you talking about being forged in hell? And I read it and he was talking and one idea that stuck with me after reading that book is this description of this chapter about uh, how we came to end up with having a commonwealth as human being. Why do we like being in, um, in states, in societies organized? What is, what is, what is that? Why, did we, why can't we just live uh, like that? Like we don't have government, we don't have anybody above anybody, everybody lives the way they want. And I had never thought, thought about that until I read that book. And now I, I come read this book and I'm reading this chapter where he talks about the foundation of the state. And to be honest, I think this is the most uh, the chapter that is so powerful, most powerful of all the chapters I've read in this book. And um, he basically, he, he, I don't think I've seen anybody puts it so clear to me so that I appreciate why we need government. Uh, because he, he, he goes to tell us about um, nature and he says that we humans are part of nature of course and um, if you remove the state we just go into the nature and we just become like other animals of course um, but now nature the, the, the interesting thing with nature nature has its own laws and the laws of nature are not the laws we live by in an organized society but that does not mean the laws of nature are disorganized. They are very organized as well. But it says in the, in the wild, where there is no state, there is no evil. Um, every individual has what he calls, um, uh, what does he call it? He calls it uh, laws of, uh, laws of, of, of uh, I might have, what is it called? Um, he calls it natural rights. That's what he calls it. In the wild, every individual has the natural right to live to their fullest, to achieve whatever they want to achieve, which is full freedom. Uh, but now, in this uh, natural right, having this natural right also means being highly exposed to danger. Like, in the, like I've said, he says in nature there's no evil. So if somebody comes and kills you and takes away uh, whatever you had collected, maybe it's food. Uh, that's not evil. That's acceptable. They are they are living. They are trying to to survive. So if they kill you and survive longer than you, it's acceptable in nature. Uh, if they trick you into giving them something and you promise, but you never come to to fulfill that promise, is still acceptable. Is how the the nature works. That's those are the laws of of of, of nature. But now he says. That comes with a lot of fear because everybody, while somebody might come and, and, and take away what I have by force, I can also go and take away some, something somebody else has by force. And now this creates, everybody is in fear. Uh, nobody is, can sit pretty and be like they are comfortable. Even the most powerful are still in fear because things can be grabbed from them. They can be murdered, things like that. Now he says, humans, discover that let's not live in fear. Let's come together and form a commonwealth and then come up with the laws that you shouldn't do this to this person or to the another person. You should do this. If you give a promise, you should, you should make sure 
you 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 meet that promise um and how that's how a commonwealth came up that's how now we started living as organized societies and um and 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 and, and then in this commonwealth sometimes we have to decide who is going to enforce uh for example contracts me and you agree uh and he says most people will meet to do whatever they they whatever they they promise to do because of the fear of of um of the sovereign of the person who has the power um if, if there is no that fear people will not be will be giving promises and not and not uh, keeping them so he says people people under the state now we've agreed on the rules of interaction and there's a, there's something that he, he he mentions in this chapter that I found to be so interesting. It's a concept that I also saw in Maimonides' The Guide for the Perplex. In The Guide for the Perplex, Maimonides says that as humans and more, uh, even other animals, we usually move from what is injurious uh, towards what is beneficial. And it was a very interesting idea to me. Uh, he, he mentioned a few guys. I found the same idea in Baruch uh, book, but in Baruch, this is what he says. Now, it is a universal law of human nature that no one ever neglects anything which he judges to be good, except with the hope of gaining a greater good, or from the fear of a greater evil. Nor does anyone endure an evil except for the sake of avoiding a greater evil or gaining a greater good, which is basically the same idea. And I, Spinoza uses this to tell us that the laws we have in a, in a commonwealth are basically based on this, this one law. Uh, he continues to say that, that is, everyone will of two good choose that which he thinks is the greatest, and, and two evils that which he thinks is the least, least of two evils. I say advisedly that which he thinks the greatest or the least, for it does not necessarily follow that he judges, right? Yeah, somebody might judge wrong and think they pick the best, but then they pick the second best or even the worst. The law is so deeply implanted in the human mind that it ought to be counted among the eternal truths and axioms. And in fact, when you read this, you realize the entire society is basically built on this. Moving from what is injurious towards what is beneficial. Basically, we are incentivized in the commonwealth to behave the way behave well, either because we accept to get something good or because we fear something bad to happen. So, and also this statement kind of also speaks to the idea of uh, um, delayed gratification kind of, like some people might not take something because they hope for something better or not take, no, or, or persevere through pain because they are accept, accept, uh, expecting something good after that. Um, so basically, um that's that's what he thinks is um is the the foundation